everybody, and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43, and tonight we are back in the Yuga. And we have a special guest. I am with Mod Squad Rin. You guys may remember her from a couple weeks back. She's my friend. We get together occasionally, and we game it out for a few games. Uh, well, in this case, a couple hours. Um, but this game is going to be insane. For all the wrong reasons. But uh, it's going to be ridiculous. So hopefully you guys are ready. We're about to carry hard in a Yuga. I know. Sounds ridiculous. Don't worry. It is. And it's probably more ridiculous than you're possibly thinking. Okay? This game is going to come down to the wire. And it's going to take everything I got to pull our team through it. And then a little bit more. But, uh, yeah. So, triple destroyer per team, so six destroyers in the game. Uh, we get an extra cruiser because I believe it's a lower tier cruiser. I could be wrong, but, uh, we get an extra cruiser. It's an aircraft carrier game. We got all the possible bad things that could possibly go wrong, uh, when you jump into a low tier. Now, we know we overmatched this Congo, so we're gonna reach out and try to touch him right off the bat. Uh, we gotta also be careful because we got the broadside going out to that Bayern. So we turn away, we take one overpin from him, no big deal. We did score 11,000 damage on that, that beautiful first salvo. And then we see the Oklahoma doing the craziest thing that he could possibly do, which is basically sailing broadside. He is, he is angled a little bit, but uh, not enough. He is begging for it right now, and we're going to see if we can't give it to him. And that looks like a pretty solid salvo. Now remember, the Yuga is actually ridiculously accurate. And yeah, we get another 14,000 damage done, 25,000 damage in two shots. Yeah, nasty. But uh, Yuga is actually really consistently good. Like, I don't know why they thought this thing was going to be, like, not overpowered, but if I had to say that this thing is, this is overpowered. Like, just flat out. You get two reload boosters. Of course, we don't make the best out of our first reload booster, but... That comes to down to me mostly, but uh, we we see it, the Congo broadside on out there, just begging for it. We take the shot, and this Congo is going to be a thorn in my side. This man has got the luckiest RNG I've ever seen on the planet. How he gets away for sailing around broadside in his Congo for the entirety of the match, and I do mean entirety of the match, is beyond me. That first salvo that we got on him while he was bowing and we did 11,000 damage to him, that's the only time that this man actually gets punched. The rest of the match, we sit here and we shoot at him and shoot at him and shoot at him and he somehow gets away with it. I don't know how that works. I say that, we just punched him again for 10k. But still, remember that, that Congo, alright? Remember him. Now, obviously, we do have a New Mexico shoving up on us. We have the Ciro out there in the distance, so we gotta be paying attention to that. This New Mexico is begging for it, man. He's He's got a destroyer to worry about. He goes full broadside to me at close range. We're going to reach through that bow side plating and punch him. He's lucky we didn't get a citadel. I don't think we quite got through the bow side plating. I think we hit the belt armor, which is why we didn't maybe citadel him there. Uh, but yeah, still a nasty hit. We take a pretty nasty hit in return. But uh, you can see our destroyer's all about that life. He's about to go, hey, Mr. Bojangles, how about you dance? But this is the weakest torp strike I've ever seen in my life. I swear that looked like a freaking Minakazi. But no, that's the new Visby. Like, that thing had no torp damage. None. <laughs> I have no idea how, how much damage that thing does, but it's not much. All right. Obviously, we've got Sirov out here. He's already taken a couple hits, I believe, from Rin, actually. So we're going to try to see if we can't punish him as well. See if we can't remove him really quickly. Because the sooner we get rid of him, the better. And especially when you see how this game ends, like, we need to get rid of this guy. So we take the shot. He's got pretty much no health left. And of course, we managed to hit him for like nothing. Like we, we got one full penetration, one overpin, and of course we leave him alive. Now with enough people shooting at you, you're going to die. Now look at this Congo! Look at him. He just disappeared, but we know exactly where he's at. We don't have to do anything crazy. He does fire his gun, so we're looking to potentially hit him here. But he doesn't get spotted, so we are forced to go ahead and take the blind shot. But we know where he's at. And we get 71,000 damage right now. And we do get a pretty solid hit on this guy for three overpins. 
but that's only 3,000 more damage. Now, obviously, Rin manages to take out the, uh, the carrier, which is big, but unfortunately, she takes a bunch of torpedoes from the Farragut, which is not preferable. And uh, it's at this point that my team starts to fall apart. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. My team literally starts to fall apart here. Now look at this Congo, still sitting full broadside and begging for it. We take the shot. Those look pretty solid, right? Like, this should be kill. Like, it's a Congo for God's sakes. And we don't get a Citadel. That's six full pins, or four full pins and two, two over pins. Then we use our reload booster again, and I'm like, dude's dead. There's no chance. He's going forward. We've got him dead to rights. And... Nope, he survives. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. Our two reload boosters, basically useless. Uh, neither of which did any real damage. But we're at 93,000 damage. We've got a single kill. The teams are tied up. Both teams have lost three. One team has lost their carrier. One, hit. One team has not. Now, I'm expecting the Farragut to potentially torque me here. So we're going to go ahead and start turning in. Um, we don't want to play around. Now, this Dallas... We know he's right here. We're going to go ahead and try to get him, but then the Farragut pops up. Now, I don't want to turn all the way broadside because, obvious reasons, there's the torpedo. Now, we're going to take one on the bow. It, it causes a flood. We have to damage con that. Now, we are worried that the Farragut's going to be able to flip around to the other side and drop torps off of the other side of his ship. I'm fairly confident he has two wing turrets and a central turret, right, for his uh, torp launchers. So, he, w he should have the ability to drop torps off of both sides of his ship. And if he hasn't done it yet, then we've got to be worried about that. Now, this Dallas, like, this dude's begging for it. You cannot be angled in a cruiser at these kinds of ranges and expect to get away with it. And, uh, he does get away with it. Five overpins. I wish I was as lucky as these people, man. Angled cruiser at 12 kilometers. Should have been a kill. But, uh, yeah, Dallas is shooting us. The Farragut's now opening up on us. We got the Congo over there. We're giving our broadside to the Bayern. We got a destroyer right behind us, a cruiser right behind us, a second cruiser right behind us. Uh, my battleship's running away from the Congo. Because reasons. <laughs> I don't know why either. But he is. Uh, there's one destroyer that's all the way back at our carrier. The other destroyer's right in front of us. I have no idea why our battleship's running away from that Congo. But uh, you can see, I want to shoot the Congo, but I can't. I have to wait for the, my shot on this destroyer. Now, I know that there's a good possibility that I'm going to be taking torps here. I also know that I'm going to be getting shot from the right side. Now, we do get turned in, but unfortunately, we take two of them. And uh, we get our damage con back just in time. At this point, I'm extremely frustrated because my guy's right freaking behind me in a destroyer. All he needs to do is go up here and spot this guy for me. Trying to spot a destroyer with a battleship... Like, when you don't have the RGA mod, is so infuriating. We know he's here, but we gotta get close enough to spot him. And it's infuriating. But uh, we finally get detected by uh, the Byron in the back. He's got us spotted. We know that the destroyer's right here. And so we're just waiting for our chance. Hoping that he just pops up at any moment. And finally, he fires his guns. He gets lit up because of smoke firing penalty, and then we absolutely death strike him. Um, and then that's when the Dallas decides he wants to come out and play. So we've got to get ready to fight the Dallas. Now, Visby has no health. He's already launched torps on the Dallas. Is he going to land those torps on the Dallas? If so, that's going to be glorious. Wait for it. We managed to not get hit by the German battleship, but no, he's he's turned away from this this uh, destroyer. So obviously cruisers get away for now. But uh, we take a front front turret, and we get 3,400 damage. We at least got a full penetration out of that one. And now we're gonna swing around the rear guns and get ready to fire the rest of our firepower at him. Uh, and we also have the Congo here. Now, again, this Congo has no friggin' health. And I'm like, okay, well, all we got to do is lob the island, hit him with one or two shells, we kill him, right? So, I'm assuming that guy's dead at this point. But, wait for it, he lives! I don't know how, he just does. He takes a full penetration, but lives. That dude did not have 3,000 hit points. And yet, he somehow manages to live. But uh, Dallas is tempting fate. He's begging for it. He's continuing to push uh, the engagement with either our carrier or our destroyer. 
Uh, so we're, we're gonna go ahead and take a shot at him again. And uh, this time, we're finally rewarded with the Citadel, and we managed to take all of his health, and then we've got the front guns loaded, so we're gonna be able to finish him off. And that's gonna be huge. So getting rid of him, that's 128,000 damage done. We're no longer spotted. We've only got 7,000 hit points. We've got a guy that's just now getting back into our will to rebuild. That's gonna help us out quite a bit, um, because we need to stay alive. This game's incredibly close, and uh, if not for us, we just assume the team isn't going to do anything, and they're going to die. Okay? Now here, we thought we were going to be able to lob that with the rear guns. Finally, the Budyani, of all things, manages to land a shot on him and kill him. So that just leaves the buyer down here, and again, we have 700 points, so we don't have to worry about losing this one, um, unless, of course, we die. So, uh, we're going to try not to die. <laughs> Byron's still sailing basically broadside. We haven't fired at him in so long, but now he's the only guy left, so he's got to know that we're shooting at him, right? So we take the shot. We get spotted by planes, because, obviously. Um, and then we get an overpin, of course. Of course. So we're going to swing around. We're going to get the full broadside firepower off. Uh, the guy turns towards us, which makes it even easier to hit him. There's torpedoes coming from our carrier. Our cruisers are doing what they're doing. And we get the final kill, getting three overpins and a full... And we end up with our dreadnought as well. So, a really exciting, crazy, uh, borderline almost death. But 136,000 damage, dreadnought, high cal, dev strike. Four kills, one short of our Kraken. If I could have just killed that stupid Congo, that was our Kraken. But top of the leaderboard, 2,877 base XP in a tier 5 battleship. You gotta love it. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.